Psalms chapter 45. Good to have you all with us. Psalms chapter 45. I was talking to a little girl in the foyer. I said, how old are you? She said, four. I said, well, I'm 60. She said, that's old. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was that age, I thought 40 was old. Things look a little different when you get 40, don't they? And you get 60, you don't think it. Oh, no, 60 isn't old. 90 or 100 is old. When you get to be 80, you come down the aisle like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give you a chance to get to 45, Oscar. Psalms 45, how many of you have it already? You do stand with me. I didn't know where to stop on this. I'm just going to read the whole thing through. We're going to talk about the queen and gold this morning. The queen and gold is the message today. And it entails the entire chapter 45 of Psalms. Wife says I read too fast, so I'll just read it. You can follow after. All right. My heart is indicted in a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thy arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell myrrh and of aloes, and Cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophar. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there, there with a gift, even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within, her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought into the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy father shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Heavenly Father, this portion of thy word, as David has penned it, inspired by the Holy Ghost, we thank you that today it has as much need and usefulness in our lives as well. And we ask you, Lord, now to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive that which you'd want us to see, and Lord, that which you want us to receive. We thank you already for the hour, Lord, of sharing your precious word. And now again, in this worship service, we worship and we praise your wonderful and matchless name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Testimony, thoughts, comments? There is hope in God. Whatever, whatever it is that you're going through. Just look to him and he will guide you. Amen. Right. Thank you. Let's pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to share your precious word today. And I pray especially for these that perhaps will come by, they, by chance, they think, to this website and hear this message today. I know that whatever is going on in your life, God knows and he cares and he loves you. And he'll fix whatever problem, whatever need you have. Just trust in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Queen in Gold, in the 45th chapter of Psalms, we have here a beautiful picture of Christ and his bride. 
a great marriage is about to take place and the writer is boiling over with ecstasy and excitement. My heart is indicting or boiling over a good matter. He can hardly contain himself. An incredible ceremony with grand and glorious bridegroom and a beautiful bride dressed in gold. Several years ago, the entire world was mesmerized by the royal wedding in England. Millions around the globe were glued to the TV sets as Princess Diana and Prince Charles were married. It was one of the most glamorous and celebrated of weddings in modern history. TV networks had color commentators who described every detail of the proceedings. If you had tuned in, you'll remember such things. News clips showed the princely life of Charles and his polo matches and his duties as a prince and his inheritance as the next king of England, his throne and his riches and his palace. The commentators described this in exquisite detail, everything about Princess Di, her hairstyle, her royal gown, her shoes, her ornaments, her ring, her flowers, her royal carriage, and even during the wedding ceremony, as the couple stood together at the altar, a commentator whispered details into the microphone. Isn't she beautiful? Look at her shoes and her flowers. It was romantic. It was romantic and breathtaking. We have just passed through a time in February, February the 14th, Sweetheart's Day, Valentine's Day. A chance and opportunity for you to go get those cards and say the things that you may not have the courage or know how rightly to say it. And so you look for the right card and you look for the right things that's said. And they say it just the way you'd like to be able to say it. Perhaps you lost right, a loss of words to say it. Somebody already spent the time to say it the right way, the correct way, in a beautiful way, in a way that's loving you. The way that expresses your thoughts and desires and wish you could put it in words so somebody else had already put it in words for you. So it's easy for you to just go out and purchase that and say, honey, this is really, really what I really do mean. And so the prince and princess were united in a holy marriage until death do part. People all over the globe wept at the sight. Today we have lived to see this marriage disintegrate into an ugly breakup. And not only did we witness the breakup of the, of the marriage, but we saw the paparazzi who had chased Diane relentlessly, always trying to find a story about her, chased her to her even death. The marriage described here in Psalms chapter 45 is a union that is far, far more glorious and grand. It is full of romance and beauty and majesty. It is a marriage that will never end. And it is meant for eternal glory. This wedding is all about King Jesus taking a bride. At this very moment, you and I are seated in heavenly places with King Jesus. And that much greater than that, we are engaged to him. And soon a grand and glorious marriage will take place. A majestic royal wedding beyond anything this world has ever seen. The commentator for this marriage is the Holy Spirit who unfolds to us a glorious scene. Look at verse 6. King Jesus is standing before his throne. His royal scepter is in his hand. His garments, verse 7, are full of wonderful aroma of myrrh and olives. He has come from the ivory palace of his father, verse 8, where he has been anointed with the oil of gladness. Verse 3, he's dressed in his full military regala. His, his glittering sword is strapped upon his thigh. He has conquered all his enemies. His kingdom is secure. He reigns in peace and power. Victor over all. The scripture says he is fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Verse 2. Every battle this king has fought, every enemy he has laid low, every act of grace and mercy he has provided has been for his bride, the church. And it was all meant for this very moment. And now he's ecstatic. He's beaming with joy. And he's full of excitement. He is anticipating being joined to his beautiful bride. He gazes down the long corridor of the palace waiting for her to approach with all her wedding party, her maid of honor, and, and, maid of, and her, her maids, 
And I think about the many times as a pastor called upon to do marriage ceremonies. And I think about standing here waiting for the, the bride and her attire to arrive. And looking at the nervous bride, uh, bridegroom is standing there fidgeting him. And sometimes his hands and palms are so sweaty they can't get the rings on. And, and he's just so nervous in anticipation of this great and wonderful day. For me as a pastor, it's just another wedding for me to perform. And but he is this is his first time and he's in front of people that you know they're all his friends. He should be he should feel at ease if I ask them all to come out to his wonderful day. And he's just a nervous wreck. <laughs> And then it's interesting because at the, at the practice, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, well, this is not going to be a big thing. And oh, yeah, yeah. And I know I've been there before. I've seen it all happen. And they just kind of think, there's no big deal. But boy, the big deal is when everybody's there and you're standing up here and you're looking at all these faces. And all of a sudden, it's a big deal. <laughs> what do you think? I well, don't want to say too much. <laughs> you know, I, I just laugh because it's just, that's just, I've seen it so many times. It's so wonderful. It always remains the same. And it's just, it's just a blessing to really be always a part of it. I do, I do enjoy being a part of it. And it's just really an honor to do it. And I'm thinking about this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful wedding. The psalmist tells us the bridegroom could have, could have chosen a bride from many honorable daughters in the kingdom. Look at verse 9. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. But he chose only one. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophar. Ophar gold was the purest, most refined gold made in those days. This bride is adorned in it. What a sight she is, as she is brought into the king, verse 14. Absolutely glowing, her heart is pure. Her golden crown glistens with incredible needlework. It, is, it wasn't just some broad cloth picked out of endless yards of yarn, but it was intricately interwoven with threads of the purest gold. And it was gold ornaments that shined forth in what a spectacular scene. The queen in gold marches toward the king with great fanfare. What a glorious sound, the tambourines and the trumpets and the stringed instruments. And behind her, as far as the eye can see, her wedding party. An army of virgins dressed in white, singing, dancing, praising with great joy. And the bride is leading the whole procession. And then they're coming to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Finally, the queen takes her place at the king's right hand. Everyone is rejoicing because this is the royal wedding of eternity. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Verse 14 and 15. Can you imagine this scene with me this morning? This wedding is the purpose. It's the highlight of all creation. And there stands King Jesus. His heart is full of joy. And here comes his bride, the redeemed of mankind. Dressed in pure gold, the righteousness of Christ. I want to stop here for a moment. It might look like just another romantic royal wedding, but my question is this, just who is this bride in gold? Some commentators say that it describes a historical marriage between King Jor Juram of Judah and Atali. And if you do some studying, you'll see that that great royal wedding did take place at this particular time. But this, there's much more to see. And this is just conjecture. I believe with some of the other more the spiritually minded scholars that this is messianic. I believe it is a message. It's very clear. It's about Jesus and his bride. The bridegroom is our king and Lord Jesus Christ. And the bride is you and I, his church. Believers who have prepared themselves for his coming. Who yearn for him with great expectancy. Whose hearts are without spot and wrinkle. 